So I'm Benjamin Cohen, I'm 30 years old, I'm a journalist, um, primarily working right now as a publisher of Pink News, one of the UK's main gay news publications. I also campaign for same-sex marriage. Um, so I grew up in Elstree, which is uh, in Hertfordshire, just outside of London, uh, in a very traditional Jewish family. Um, so I have two sisters, both of whom are younger than me, uh, and I, my, I have very normal parents. Um, we uh, used to go, or still do go, to a United Synagogue. Uh, my parents are modern Orthodox, um, you know, keep kosher in the home, uh, but would drive on a Saturday, would turn lights on and off, things like that. Um, and I just had a very conventional uh, upbringing. Um, when you're going to Hebrew classes and things, I went to a st I went to a secular school until 16 when I moved and, and went to Jewish free school. I had same-sex attractions, um, probably maybe as young as eight or nine. Uh, probably around the time that I actually learned the facts of life. I learned the facts of life when I was nine, um, but I wasn't quite able to tally what I was like read in the little book that my parents gave me with how I felt myself. Um, but I was very religious, uh, it was more religious, more religious than my parents. And I felt that um, the feelings I had, because I'd been taught that they were wrong feelings, um, were a test from God and that what I was living through or feeling was a um, was a test, something that I couldn't, I, I, I would struggle with. Um, and that's something that I, was very much part of my thoughts process when I was 13 and 14 and sort of turned 15. But <coughs> when I was 15, I made a decision to um, tell my mum how I felt. Um, it's something that's weird because she doesn't really remember it very clearly. Um, because I told her that I thought I was gay. Um, well, I actually said to her, um, would you love me no matter what? And she went through a list of things that could possibly I could possibly have done or could be about me. Uh, and it was no, that have I stolen something? Have I, I, it was like a list of crimes I could have committed. Um, and then at the end it was like, oh, do you think you're gay? And I said, yes, probably. Um, but I, I, to confuse her, then moved schools and I told people that I was, I had, I had same sex attractions and, um, but, I, I then decided it made girls really like me for some reason. So I then had two girlfriends, which confused my mother. And I had to come out again when I was 21, when I was in my first proper relationship. And um, when I came out, um, again, and not just to my mom, but my entire family, uh, the issue wasn't at all that my partner was someone of the same sex. It was that my partner wasn't Jewish. And that that was a more, more difficult thing for them to cope with because it meant someone who didn't have the same upbringing sitting around the Friday night dinner table um, and you know for them it was more important that their children had Jewish partners than um, than you know, conventional heterosexual partners. I came into the Jew Jewish LGBT community properly because I wanted to find a boyfriend. I have found a boyfriend now, he's not Jewish, and I, so some of the draw that there was isn't there anymore. Part of the reason why I used to come to events was in the hope that I might meet someone. Um, I don't need to meet anyone now, so what would I be, what, I'm, like, I'm coming for different reasons, um, I suppose, uh, but, it, but it was a very great way of me, g it, it was like the, it was a real, the Jewish LGBT community was a real kind of rock, um, to help me get through what was quite an upsetting breakup when you split up with someone for after being with them for seven years in a in a conventional heterosexual relationship very likely people got married maybe even had a child by by that point um and many of my friends who are straight who've been in relationships from the same age that i was are married and have children um and i, I felt very alone and so a good way of meeting new people was going to Jewish LGBT things principally because it meant that you had a double affinity, you're both Jewish and LGBT. I'm on the committee for Gay Jews in London, which is um, a group primarily arranged on Facebook, um, and I'm uh, on the board of Keshet, which is the Jewish LGBT group, and I was you know, 
there for its view founding. Um, I do, I mean, my, my primary, I, I do a lot of campaigning, but it's not specifically on the Jewish LGBT thing, well, I, but uh, I suppose, like, Jew, the Jewish thing is, it, it runs through all of elements of my life, um, because I'm still doing all those things that I did when I was a child, I still do. So I still go for Friday night dinner, uh, either at my parents or grandparents or my sister, um, or at my house and have friends over for Friday night dinner. I still go to a synagogue, um, the synagogue that I went to as a child, one that you know, is a United Synagogue and, and still disagrees with LGBT rights. Um, and actually, they had recently a, a shir by a rabbi that explaining the reasons why being gay is wrong. So it was a very useful opportunity for me to then have a public argument and, and explain the reasons why the rabbi was wrong rather than um, me for being gay. I don't feel there's a, it's possible to totally separate if I think about my own personality. Judaism is a very big part of it, um, but it's, it's not about, what's important for me is it's not actually about faith, it's about community. Um, my personal sort of aspirations and future uh, you know, is at some point to get married, um, hopefully to my boyfriend, um, and to have children. I'd like to have Jewish children. I'd, I'd like to be very normal. I've, I'm one thing that's that's important for my own personal identity that is maybe different from some people who are who are Jewish and LGBT or maybe Jewish and queer is I'm very traditional and I'm very conservative really on a, on a social basis. And for that reason, I want to have a life that is very similar to the life of my parents or grandparents. I don't want to have a different life, a hedonistic life or a, what people used to perceive as a gay life. So for me, m what I aspire to is being in a stable, monogamous relationship, having children, eventually having grandchildren. And that's important for me. And that's because, and part of that reason is because of, you know, is because of Judaism, it's because of the, um, the structures uh, and the rituals that made up my childhood. And I'd like to be able to do that with my own child one day and I think actually more and more people who are LGBT particularly younger LGBT people are seeing that being gay doesn't mean being something different and being the, uh, something other it very much used to be what it is now is it's about being the same um, as everyone else and why we're having equal marriage why the inst being being able to be open up into that institution means that our relationships can be considered in the same context as um, heterosexual relationship and uh, maybe that means that I could be accused of being heteronormative but I probably am but I'm just maybe just normal normative and want to have a normal life for myself in the future if you had to pick one item, some object that you feel is the closest to, to you, what would you pick? Well, there's one particular thing, which is, and I haven't been able to bring it with me. Um, it's a rainbow star of David. It's actually one I bought in the Prowler shop in Soho. It's always been on me um, when I've been meeting with politicians to talk about same-sex marriage, and it's always noticed by them. I, wanted to, I, want, I always want to make the point, because I think that outside people may only see um, the more intolerant views, and I, I've used that as a mechanism to start a conversation, to say, actually, I've got a rainbow star of David, and that's because most, I think most people who are, who are Jewish are okay with the fact that I'm LGBT. Um, and I, I think that, um, while I talk about that, that, it, that really our community is changing, um, after I had an argument with the rabbi, a debate with the rabbi in synagogue, um, my boyfriend came the following week for the first time to a synagogue for Passover. And everyone there, or many of the people there, knew that he was there as my boyfriend. But they were incredibly welcoming to him. And they weren't doing it in a patronizing way, in a way to say, oh, well, aren't I great because I'm shaking the hands of a gay person. They were doing it because, um, they were pleased, like whether it's my parents, religious friends or whoever, um, they were pleased that I'm happy. And also pleased that I was there with a partner who wanted to be there himself to understand and learn about Judaism. And, and that's so, it, it makes just me feel so different to how I used to feel about um, 
being gay and Jewish. If it, at some points when I was younger, it felt like you chose one. So you can make the decision, I'm gay, and therefore I'm going to reject and not do these things, these Jewish things. And I used to do them in a very different context. So when I, my, my partner, and my former partner and I were engaged, I suppose is the right term, but we were engaged before there was even the ability to have a civil partnership. But we used to wear rings. And that ring symbolised our relationship to me. We wore them on our kind of wedding finger, um, like a commitment ring or something. I don't know what one would call it. But when I went to synagogue, I, started, I, I felt I, I, take, I used to take it off because I didn't want people to ask questions to say, um, oh, are you engaged or are you married or something? And then I'd have to not only say no, but I am also have to reveal that I'm gay. And so I, it used to be that when I was doing the Jewish things, the gay thing got put in a little box and then people didn't know that I was gay. <coughs> and then when I was doing the gay thing, the, the Jewish thing went away. I didn't used to wear, like, uh, you know, Star of David around my neck. I didn't used to really talk about the Jewish element of my life, um, I, particu particularly within the gay thing. And I, I, you know, it just, it, it's so different now. It gets better. It's because families are way more accepting of being gay than they used to be, and society is. And I feel that every day I live my life, it becomes so much easier to be gay and it becomes easier I think as well to be gay and Jewish and to try and combine both elements of your identity and it's getting better for everyone and I think that I think that's a great thing about you know our society here in Britain